Hello and welcome to this special edition of History Pod Extra, marking the centenary of the Representation of the People Act in the UK. On the 6th of February 1918, the Representation of the People Act received royal assent, marking the start of female suffrage in Great Britain. The bill had been passed in the House of Commons by 385 votes to 55 and gave women over the age of 30 who owned property the right to vote. While it therefore denied the right to a large number of women, it was still a watershed moment in the history of gender equality in the UK. A traditional explanation for Parliament's support for the bill is that it acted as some kind of reward for the vital work done by women during the First World War. Adherents of this interpretation argue that the suffragettes had actually damaged the suffrage movement through their violent actions. These included committing arson, vandalism and carrying out other high-profile protests that included the death of Emily Davison at the horse-racing Epsom Derby in 1913. This interpretation therefore argues that it was only the work done by women during the First World War, such as that in munitions factories, driving buses or working on farms, that persuaded Parliament to support women's suffrage. Conversely, in France, where women did equally important war work, they did not win the right to vote. A counter-argument therefore exists saying that this is because there was no pre-war suffrage movement in France, and certainly nothing to equal the militancy of the suffragettes. Adherents of this interpretation therefore argue that the work of the suffragettes and the suffragists before 1914 had been vitally important to women winning the right to vote years later. The actions of the suffragettes had shocked many people in Britain, and nobody was keen to return to the violence and instability of pre-1914. In the aftermath of the violence that had erupted in Russia, and then led to the Communist Revolution, the British establishment wanted to avoid that possibility at home. This interpretation therefore argues that passing a relatively moderate female suffrage section in the 1918 Representation of the People Act kept the suffragists happy, and delayed more radical reform, such as full and equal voting rights for both men and women. The Act itself was therefore an important, but rather conservative measure. Firstly, it only gave the vote to women over 30, since many politicians believed that their age meant they were much less likely to support radical politics, as they were more likely to be married with children. This meant that many of the women who had worked in the fields and in the factories during the war did not even get the right to vote, as they were generally younger than the minimum age. Secondly, only women who were property owners qualified for the vote, meaning that even the educated middle-class women who had been a large part of the suffragettes before 1914 were excluded, since many of them had gone into white-collar jobs after 1920 and gone on to live in rented property, away from their parents, as a sign of their independence. The bill itself passed through the House of Lords by 134 votes to 71, after Lord Curzon, the President of the National League for Opposing Women's Suffrage, made it clear that he would not oppose it, and therefore risk a clash with the Commons. Consequently, It received royal assent from King George V on the 6th of February 1918, increasing the electorate to about 21 million, of whom 8.4 million were women. The women's suffrage movements welcomed the 1918 representation of the People Act, with prominent campaigner Millicent Fawcett describing the act as the greatest moment of her life. However, The Act still showed a clear division between men and women, since the same Act gave all men over the age of 21 the right to vote, while those who had been on active service in the armed forces could vote from 19. Therefore, women were still not political equals even after the 1918 Act. True suffrage equality 
only came a decade later, in 1928. If you enjoy History Pod, please consider supporting it. You can find details at patreon.com forward slash history pod. Alternatively, please leave a rating or a review on iTunes, Stitcher or Google Play.